resist stuff. Stay outraged. You know, I am seeing a lot of emotionally driven hatred toward the other. And this is not something just of the left. People are very easily triggered if you attack the wonderful President Trump. It's like, you better shut your mouth, you stupid libtard snowflake. It's like, or conservatives saying things like, you know, leftists, they all group to get people together and they don't focus on the individual. The leftists do that. It's like, like calling people leftists. Like, like they're all the same. This is not something just of the left. It's a little bit more obvious on the left, but you wouldn't believe how many Candace Owens and Charlie Kirk and Graham Allen fans I have triggered by just offering new perspectives. I get why the people marching in the streets are marching. I get it, I talk about it a lot on here. But cutting through a lot of the nonsense reasons, I think there's a lot of people that are justifiably upset. The problem is they have such a pixelated version and vision of what's going on that they don't really know why they're so upset. They don't know why they're angry. So because it's so unclear to them, they just aim for something that's an easy target. If you don't can't see right, then you go for what you know is an easy target. So there's one big orange target in the White House. So everyone just points, shoots all their arrows at Donald Trump or the mass of faceless, armored riot police who have done some justifiably terrible things and they get pushed, those images of the police pushing people over and shooting rubber bullets at them over and over and over again in a loop and it becomes this mass of them. And then on the right, it's the protesters, them, they're evil. The protesters look at the police, they're evil. The red hat wearing Trump supporters, they're evil. But again, there is some legitimacy to the anger. After all, life is scary, especially during COVID. So much uncertainty in the world and we have advanced so much that we're not used to being face to face with things like a pandemic. I mean, most of our ancestors had to deal with pandemics and disease all the time. Like a hundred years ago, people just died of disease left and right. And we're just not used to that now. So it's scary. And some people are scared. So they go over the top with face shields and seven masks and things. Then other people resist that fear by saying no mask. I will not live in fear. So people are all dealing with this in different ways. And there is prevalence induced concept change where as we get safer and safer in society, things appear to be more of a threat than they might have a few generations ago. But also, this isn't just Black Lives Matter. It's also Occupy Wall Street. It's like Occupy 2.0 and Black Lives Matter and the wealth gap and all this stuff just kind of weighing down on the younger generation. I mean, the 2008 financial crisis happened to a lot of these people when they were young and they watched it and they watched these people rob billions of dollars from the American citizens and get away with it. Of course they hate the system. Of course they say dismantle systems. The systems are corrupted. I mean, look, I have a former student whose girlfriend broke up with him. He stole two cases of beer and was facing 15 months in jail. Meanwhile, HSBC Bank laundered money for the mass murdering drug cartel of El Chapo and they didn't serve a day in jail. This is a corrupt system and it's nakedly corrupt. The hypocrisy, the corruption in politics and the media. Politicians are just blatantly lying to you now and we can fact check them with the internet. And the media is blatantly lying to you. So we don't trust systems. And we kind of shouldn't trust systems so we're pissed off and want to burn it all to the ground. I get it, I really do. In my world of education, the education system has deeply failed the American citizens. We have exchanged imagination for compliance. Think about what makes a great student, someone who just does what they're told. So you just do what you're told and do what you're told and do what you're told and then eventually you can rise up the corporate ladder and you get a corner office and you buy the new Audi and life is amazing and you are effing miserable and you don't know why because you did what you were told the whole way. Well. Because America is not a place where you're supposed to just do what you're told. You're supposed to innovate. You're supposed to think outside the box. And that isn't rewarded in school. Those are the trouble kids. We've promoted learned helplessness and victimhood and outrage as virtues. And then kids are outraged and promote themselves as victims. Of course they would. They were taught it by us, teachers like me. 
Look, to all of the people out there who are marching and angry and pissed off, you're not wrong for being angry. You're truly not. You're emotional and emotions cloud your clear thinking. They cloud your logical brain. And we need to think our way through this one, not just feel it. We need to promote and build emotional fortitude to work through the anger and get towards some solutions. And as a government and civics and American history teacher, I can tell you this, the solutions are in American constitution. If we dismantle the system, things will get really, really bad. And the way we'll get out of that really bad thing is by reinventing America. What a ridiculous waste of time and lives to go full circle because what America stands for is a counter to everything that is wrong with it. Bill Clinton, in between riding Jeff Epstein Island, said, there is nothing wrong with America that can't be fixed by what's right with America. And he's spot on. Let's use the American system. Let's get familiar with civics. Let's use the American system to get through this the right way. And let's live up to the ideals of what America was always destined to be. So join me and let's improve this and let's update the software of what America is. We fix the bugs and we move on to something better.